All right, guys. Well, it has turned into a gray, gloomy, depressing Sunday here in the collapse of everything, which would, of course, be Sunday, September 17th, 2023. So I just did a short rant uh, about, I guess I'll call it something like, a doomer's inconvenient message to the climate protesters or something like that. Uh, and I was going to do a full-blown rant today on, uh, on all of these various climate protests going on, but uh, I'm going to put this little dog up here and we are going to hear from this fellow who uh, I have read rants before this fellow named Alex his middle name is A-T-E-S anyway and his last name Haywood we're going to call him Alex Haywood and who I am a big fan of. I highly suggest you go on to medium.com and subscribe to him. But I found this essay that was actually written on January 18th, 2022. And this is before I found um, Alex and medium.com. But this excellent essay does a better job pretty much elaborates on uh, what I was going to say in my full-blown climate march rant but okay Alex I have given my message to the little apocalyptic hopium addicts at the various climate marches so what do you have to tell them in your excellent essay, Doomism, Doomism is depressing, but Hopeism is killing me. Hopeism. I like it. Now, obviously, guys, I'm going to put the link <coughs> to this uh, essay on here. You can read it yourself. But if you just want to listen to this old Doomer read it for you, that's my job on this ugly Sunday. Take it away, Alex Haywood. <clears throat> Since Professor Jim Bendel's paper on deep adaptation in 2018, following the U.S. withdrawal from the Paris Climate Accord, collapseology and its cousin, doomism, have achieved mainstream notoriety. Well, this was, a, you know, over a year and a half ago. Every day seems to bring out another depressing headline about the climate ca catastrophe the planet is faced with. So, of course, loath to send their captive audience screaming in terror, the spokespeople of our present system, otherwise known as mainstream media journalists, are forced, are forced by their employers, meaning the editors and publishers, the gatekeepers of the mainstream message, are forced by their employers to end every story with a line of her, with a line of her, her with a line of unadulterated horse shit, no matter how trite. Some seem innocuous due to a lack of understanding of the scope of the problem, and some are downright outrageous, such as suggesting that the climate catastrophe will create new tourism opportunities of presently frozen landscapes. Okay. It 
is not doomism when the merchants of destruction are engineering your doom, and it is not her, and it is not her. it is not hope when all you have is faith that the capitalist will come up with some yet to be implemented technology you can hopefully afford to save yourself from them. The people who have created the problem are now screaming that it will cost trillions upon trillions of dollars to even begin to solve this problem. The fact that th this still has not woken the citizenry up to the scale of the calamity the oligarchs have created is an amazing achievement of propaganda. So guys, I'm going to break in right here before I... This is a two-part essay where the first half of this essay is talking about the oligarchs that have destroyed this planet. Uh, and, and I just want to break into Alex's excellent rant to, to uh, basically expand upon what I just said in my little rant, a kind of the companion rant to this about my message to climate marchers is that I do not blame the oligarchs. I blame every single clueless moron human being on this planet, starting with Sam Mitchell of Collapse Chronicles for keeping the oligarchs in power by buying their products. As Ayn Rand explained to us in 1957, there is one way to put the oligarchs out of business, that is to stop buying their products. Ayn Rand knew it in 1957. I know it. Sancho Panza knows it. Anybody with two brain cells left to rub together knows ain't gonna happen. We are not going to stop buying their products. So we can thank ourselves for keeping the Blue Meanies destroying the planet in power. Now Alex comes back a little bit in the second half, but I just want to make that amplification and clarification that uh, I do not necessarily, I mean, I share Alex's disdain f for these bastards, don't get me wrong, but I understand 100% where these bastards get their power from, that is from clueless morons such as myself. I'm going to try not to break in too much more. Anyway, back to Alex Haywood. The whole planet has become a super fun site, and they are as incapable and as unwilling to clean up their gigantic mess as they were decades ago, and now, finally, it is too late. No matter how they might delude you by promising to suck up the carbon they have spat out, the damage they have done knowingly to our climate and biosphere is not reversible in human time scales. So they have to keep on lying to keep the pitchforks in the barns. In the meantime, they meet, pledge, and promise, have their employees in media and academia talk about 
breakthroughs, game changers, and bringing the costs down to a level that is acceptable to them, I suppose, since the cost to us is our lives. And they know that faced with death, we will pay any price they demand. And I like how uh, Alex Haywood uh, separated and bold-faced that line, parroting what Ayn Rand said in 1957. They know, they know that faced with death, we, the clueless moron consumers, will pay any price they demand, including the price of our own deaths, the deaths of our children, the deaths of our grandchildren, and the deaths uh, of every single other earthling we share this planet with, and pretty much the death of the biosphere. Faced with that, we will pay any price they demand, so whose fault is it, Alex? On the other hand, either co-opted by their own propaganda or blinded by their own terror, the vision of success, the hopists, the hopists clamor for is one in which we solve climate change and then human civilization remains pretty much as it is now, especially for those in the relatively wealthy segments of capitalist society, which of course they occupy. The definition of success, therefore, is that we must meet this planetary emergency precisely so that we can avoid changing, changing anything that inconveniences them or reduces their quality of life or the power they wield. Ultimately, wealth, wealth is command of energy. And right now, 10 people on the earth, all white men, control more wealth, hence more energy, than the bottom 3,960,473,500 people, give or take a few dozen, at least on January 18, 2022, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and getting worse by the second. That's why Jeff Bezos can stick a rocket up his ass and take a joy ride while 820 million people are facing starvation. And then send Captain Kirk up there just to add insult to injury while the workers he thanked for his accomplishments piss in plastic bottles and apply for food stamps. Our fossil fuel driven growth that has produced more and more people, <clears throat> our fossil fuel driven growth that has produced more and more people for the last 300 years is about to come to a screeching halt. Things are going to get, things are going to rapidly get worse this, this, this decade. The continuous improvement of the quality of life for all was the biggest problem of capitalism and it will be revealed for the shameless lie 
that it always was. And then uh, he's, then Alex switches gears a little bit, starting to talk about collapse in general and the concept of discontinuity. Otherwise, the opposite of something continuing forever, no longer continuing forever and discontinuing. All right. The dictionary definition of collapse is to break down, come to nothing, fail, crumble suddenly. The speed of change defines the magnitude of collapse and given the speed with which we are warming the planet, the term most certainly is applicable as the population of countless species collapses around us. Although a Mad Max style collapse is a favorite of science fiction, given the resources we have already appropriated, a chronic, drastic, and increasing discontinuity in our lifetimes seems the most likely outcome. Given the complexity of our interconnected techno society, that means a persistent and drastic loss of complexity, as well as a reduction in the quality of life and access to energy, which in turn will lead to further reduced access to technology. And unlike recessions we are used to, this deterioration will be continuous with no rebound. The only thing continuous is discontinuity. There you go. In our present environment, discontinuity is likely to affect the wealthy last and least. The reduction of the quality of life and persistent reduction in technological capacity or the capacity to afford it will diminish drastically for the vast majority of the world's population as discontinuity becomes entrenched or worse, triggers wars involving state actors rather than proxies. By the time we fully realize our folly, our population would have been reduced, but those of us who have access to energy will still dream despair and fall in love. Yes. Although the U.S. and Canada are expected to be relatively less impacted, at least initially, we can expect vast swaths of the world's population to live at the mercy of the rich and powerful in the coming decades. It is not only that our present political structure will be unable to deal with this predicament, of course they won't be able to. It is that people are beginning to get the feeling of futility even if they can't identify the cause accurately and will look for any way out, freedoms be damned. They will rather turn to fascists who will tell them that windmills cause cancer and China is to blame for everything rather than elect people who will tell them that they cannot take cruises anymore. In discontinuity, 
technology and science will not be lost and can be can even be further developed but the divide between rich and poor will get ever greater. The professional networks of expert decision makers working for the oligarchs are deeply committed to making the same kinds of decisions they have been rewarded for making before by those same oligarchs. The journalists and academics who have been experts at explaining the systems that surround us today will keep on doing the same, ignoring the fact that the decisions the oligarchs have been making for the last three centuries have brought humanity to the brink of calamity. An orderly transition of eight billion people to anything resembling today's Western consumption levels without further damaging the biosphere is not possible. Since we cannot, since we cannot give up our dependence on either fossil fuels or growth, and we cannot extract the CO2 we have already emitted with any meaningful time span, it is going to be hotter by next year, meaning 2023 as it was, and by 2050, 2100, and beyond. The full impacts of the damage we have already inflicted on the planet have not yet been unleashed on the human infrastructure we call our economy. It is now obvious that we have already failed to create the infrastructure needed to survive today's calamities, let alone tomorrow's. So we will drift from COP 27 to COP 28 to crisis and misery. And I just need to make sure I'm, no, I'm not just sitting here talking to myself. Okay, I guess I'm, well, I probably am still talking, you know, I am talking to myself, but for the few of you still hanging on, we're only halfway through this sermon. <clears throat> Back to Alex. <clears throat> it will seem like the powers that be are not doing much because they do not know what to do. There is no achievable political program or structure to undo centuries of pillage and repression. There is no technological, scalable marvel that can suck up 300 years of our spit off the face of the planet in 30 years. Green New Deal net zero by pick your date, carbon capture, use and sequester, biomass are all designed to work in support of existing systems and practices while producing that ever essential ingredient of capitalism, growth. That is no longer an option. Consider that while talking about preservation and sustainability, for the first time in human history, we are destroying water by injecting it into fracking wells and locking it up in basalt rock for 1,000 years because it becomes too toxic. We are thus removing it from the water cycle for generations. Imagine what will happen if we grow 
that practice exponentially. Still, we, or they, well, we, uh, here we go, perfect comment for today, still, we get together and pledge, promise, and agree to meet again next year. The stress and the eventual fiery clash between those who profit from this delay and those who seek to survive it will define our politics from here on. Quoting Aristotle, quoting Aristotle, what was this 3,000 years ago, more or less? Quote, once oligarchs seize power, a society must either accept tyranny or choose revolution. And I think it is quite clear what we're going to do. As Alex has pointed out, we are going to choose tyranny. I suggest reading 1984 if you're one of these Chris, Hedge, Chris Hedges uh, acolytes thinking there is going to be a revolution by the clueless morons. Ain't gonna happen. Anyway, in this continuity, the revolution will be forced on us. There you go. Whether we choose to participate or not, willingly or unwillingly, we are in for a rude awakening and will be dragged screaming and kicking and, yes, crying into our new reality, our Apple glasses or 3D metagoggles will mean nothing when burning trees are crashing on the roofs of our houses. <coughs> so, what do we do? What do we do? <clears throat> How do we behave in the real world, one being shattered by ongoing disruption? <clears throat> that is the only conversation worth having. So before we have it, one more time. Unbelievably, but my battery light is crashing, so we're going to get into what we need to do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Those of us who are to survive and aid in those in politics need be comfortable, <clears throat> need to be comfortable with speaking plainly, truthfully, but forcefully to power. We need to be comfortable with uncertainty, loss, grief, and with managing discord and mayhem if the rules prevent us from changing the outcome of the game <coughs> we need to be comfortable with stopping playing their game <coughs> back to atlas shrugged from 19 57, but of course, we will never be comfortable with stopping playing their game. If we adhere to centuries-old philosophies that only made sense to a very limited portion of humanity, all species on this planet are likely to encounter horrific outcomes. The dismal outcome of the nation state as we know it today is all but certain. But humanity needs to evolve beyond this ingrained tribalism if it is to survive. 
ain't going to happen. We are tribing up more than we ever have since we left the trees. If the system is to change, we have to change our minds about what it means to be Homo sapiens. We have to come to the realization that our past paradigms of humanity, including growth, profit, religion, race, gender, and wealth, have led us all to the brink of extinction. I'm sure that we are all going to come to that realization. <clears throat> Since the unraveling of the status quo will be driven by reductions in energy availability, it would make sense to collectively allocate our remaining energy resources to response planning and casualty mitigation. We need to develop non-fossil energy sources to be sure, but we know these sources will not be able to supply as much energy as fossil fuels. We therefore must deploy them strategically and equitably and not with the intent to maintain current patterns of production and consumption that encourage more growth. One more time ain't gonna happen. I was starting to get a little bit nervous that Alex Haywood was turning into an apocaloptimist with all of this we need to crap. Okay, whenever you see the words we need to, whether or not we need to do something, automatically say ain't gonna happen and throw it in the hopium bin. So what else do we need to do, Alex? How about this one for a, for a common sense idea? We need to eliminate the profit motive in manufacturing and production to drive consumption down. There you go! Not every innovation needs to be implemented. We need to provide free education, free contraception, free health care, free family planning to reduce our population as rapidly as we can. Ain't gonna happen. We need to realize we are one species and not a motley collection of political viewpoints, beliefs, fears, colors, self-described tribal identities, and insatiable needs. We need to realize the answer to the question, who pays, is actually who doesn't. We need to do these and many, many other things together. But we won't. Thank you, Alex Haywood. But we won't. Ain't gonna happen. We are trying to defend by violence that which we took by violence. The earth does not belong to humanity. We belong to the earth. The earth does not understand political borders, does not care about our beliefs, and her laws need no police for enforcement. We have forgotten who we are. The earth remembers. She 
is about to send us a howler. A howler. And uh, let's see if we have a uh, comment from. Uh, let's look at the. Uh, you know, a, there's nine comments on this article in the past year and a half. But, of course, Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles had to uh, wrap up this essay with his own comment. I was getting a little worried there toward the end that you were straying into the we need to brand of brainless hopium that too many doomers still default to. Glad you clarified that, that it ain't gonna happen. Any self-respecting doomer knows this. As Ayn Rand explained in 1957, the oligarchs are going to laugh all the way to the bank and then the cemetery because they know damn well. They know damn well that we clueless morons are not going to do the one thing we need to do. Stop buying their products. That sure as shit ain't ever gonna happen. That said, I am off to Tractor Supply for some last-minute deals before their three-day sale ends. And that is exactly what I need to be doing. Um, uh, time is running out on the Tractor Supply mega sale. And I am going up to buy some supplies for my tractor while I still can. I highly suggest you get out there and uh, buy all of the products for your tractor while you still can. Bye, guys. I don't believe it. Little dog, are you uh, off to buy some supplies for your tractor? Well, you still can. Bye, guys.